Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And there is one body and one spirit. There is one Lord, God, all of us. one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who on this day taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And now a prayer for Memorial Day. Lord God, in whom there is life and light, accept our thanks for those who died for us, our prayers for those who mourn, our praise for the hope you have given us. Refresh our hearts with dedication to heroic ideas, with appreciation for the honesty of the just, with obedience to upright laws. Forgive us when our patriotism is hollow, when our nationalism is arrogant, when our allegiance is half-hearted. Stir within us thanksgiving for all we have inherited, vigilance for the freedoms of all people, willingness to sacrifice for fellow citizens. Comfort us with the joy that Christ died for all those who died for us, bringing life and immortality to light for all who believe in him. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, 
and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. When it was evening of the day of the resurrection, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord.
in the name of one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us. Way to go, St. Cross. You were listening to the signs of God's love pulpit announcements the past few weeks. It is a sea of red out there that will make Reverend Rachel proud if she ever logs on to watch this service, which I highly doubt. <laughs> we wear red to help celebrate what is, in my opinion, the most significant sign of God's love for us, Pentecost, not to minimize crucifixion and resurrection. It is not uncommon for Christians to believe that Pentecost is all about the phenomenon of speaking in tongues, meaning glossolalia, a kind of ecstatic speech practiced by St. Paul and his congregations. Some Christianities focus heavily on this aspect of relationship with God in worship and personal piety. When I was a child, I witnessed one such event at my interdenominational church. A man rose in the middle of the service and began speaking in an incomprehensible utterance no one could understand. Since no interpreter followed to tell the congregation what the man was witnessing to, the pastor thanked the man and with the help of the good ushers, asked him to sit down. In our scripture from Acts today, note that there is no need for an interpreter and no one is being silenced. What happened on the day of our Christian Pentecost is much more exciting, mystical, far-reaching, and real. What is being communicated through the power of the Spirit is completely intelligible and understood by everyone. Our reading from Acts today states that when the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. The author is actually referring to the Jewish festival of Shavuot, also known as the festival of weeks or booths. Both of those are correct. The Jewish community occasionally refers to Shavuot as Pentecost, which literally means 50, because it occurs 50 days or seven weeks after Passover. The ancient historian Josephus, who would be extremely ancient now if he was still with us, Josephus tells us it is the most important Jewish festival and it is centered on the temple in Jerusalem. It combines both a Thanksgiving harvest celebration at that time, as well as God's gifting of the Torah on Mount Sinai. The temple held the hope and the promise that God resided there and from there would flow out into the world. Jesus was deeply connected to this tradition. In fact, in another very familiar story in John, at the pinnacle of the festival, Jesus cried out saying, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and let the one who believes in me drink. So it makes a lot of sense that 50 days after his resurrection, the spirit of Jesus showed up at a crucial festival moment to a large number of his disciples. Now, an interesting part of this miracle that we might not readily remember is that Jesus told the disciples in no uncertain terms to hang out in Jerusalem, to wait there for the promise of the Father, wait to be clothed with power from on high, he promised them that they would be baptized with the Holy Spirit, that they would receive power when the Holy Spirit came upon them. Just imagine their shock and awe when they finally understood what the heck Jesus was talking about. Now scholars say that this account in Acts can be thought of as an extension 
of gifts of Jesus's gift of the Holy Spirit to his initial disciples gathered in the house that we also read today. If you thought the disciples in the upper room were frightened, just imagine the folks with zero preparation gathered outside the house when spirit arrived. Arrived as a vision of tongues that looked like fire and the sound like a violent wind. Now that's a clear sign of God's love that we may not, deep down, really want to experience. Pentecost is that awesome and life-altering miracle when God extended God's self for our sake in a new way, pouring into them his very spirit, empowering them to speak so others could hear, filling them with the ability to attest to God's deeds of power through Jesus the Christ, proving the reality of the triune God, and leaving them steeped in God's peace. Same spirit that was breathed in creation in Genesis, same spirit breathed by Jesus on the frightened disciples in his second resurrection appearance we hear in the Gospel of John, but with a twist. The pouring out of the Holy Spirit on those who gathered in Jerusalem is the fulfillment of Jesus' promise that his presence and peace will always be with us, will never leave us. That we can rest assured that spirit has been with us in the worst times, in what we are facing now, and what we will be experiencing in the future. It is dynamic and interactive. It is not stagnant. Spirit is constantly being poured out on all flesh, all humanity, all of creation. The spirit, the advocate, will teach us what we need to know as we go along the paths of our lives. There is no need to live in fear. Now, there are certainly so many times in our personal lives and our life on this planet where it seems the spirit has gone absent. It can be hard to remember that God has a mission. The good news is that God's mission of presence, peace, and wholeness for the earth and all that is in it has a church. We are that body. We are witnesses to the truth that spirit exists, spirit is real, and spirit is active despite evidence to the contrary. This last week, I was in Boston at my niece's grad school graduation from Brandeis University. We went to a reception for the Heller School of Social Policy, where my niece and I managed a photo op with none other than Professor Anita Hill. Uh-huh, indeed. Gathered were folks from almost every continent on Earth. An incredible array of peoples and languages were represented. Imagine my surprise when the dean started her address with how blessed they all were to be beloved community, working for justice in the world in so many different ways. I thought I was in church. Spirit was in that room, no doubt. I also think of places like South Africa breaking down apartheid and places like Rwanda healing from genocide. I remember our very own vestry hearing the need for housing for our first refugees and being able to make a decision right then and there that St. Cross was up for the task. Yes, the spirit of Jesus is still in the room Spirit is always communicating, sometimes subtly, sometimes more like a violent wind. Listen and watch. Take time to welcome it in. Cultivate a relationship through prayer and an open heart and an open mind. Look for signs of God's love flowing out. No need to be afraid, for spirit brings with it God's presence and mercy and always God's peace. 
There is no better reason to rejoice. Amen. The liturgy for our baptisms will take place on page 301 in the blue Book of Common Prayer in your pews. Page 301 in the Book of Common Prayer. I'd also like to invite any children or youth who are here, if they would so like, to head up to the balcony with Miss Emma up there, if you would like to get a really great view of the baptisms that are about to happen. You are welcome to join Miss Emma up there and Mr. Lesser for the, uh, a good view of the baptisms. Page 301. The candidates for holy baptism will now be presented. We present Blake Randall Lancer for the sacrament of holy baptism. <laughs> Good. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? I do. do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. And this next question is for all of you gathered here at the bottom of page 303. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We will. Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God?
Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Let us now pray for these persons who are to receive the sacrament of new birth. Let us, pray, let us pray for these persons who are to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen.
name this child? Blake Randall Lancer, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You did so good. Blake, you are sealed by the Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Ella Rose. Put your hand over. Why don't you lean over like this? Yeah, lean over like this. There you go. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You can lean back up now. You can lean back up. Ella Rose, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Ella Rose, receive the light of Christ. And now, continuing on page 308, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon these your servants the forgiveness of sin and have raised them to new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all their works. Amen. Amen. And saying together at the bottom of page 308, let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified. Proclaim his resurrection and share with us in his eternal priesthood. Congratulations. Yeah. She did awesome, Ella. Congratulations. God bless you. Congrats. Yeah, pleasure. Congrats, guys. Good job, Ella. You did awesome. You were so good. Yeah.
Welcome all. It is so nice to have you with us on this Pentecost Sunday. And I love the red in the congregation. Thanks to all who made it feel like a great Pentecost day. So thanks for wearing your red to church. Uh, again, want to give a special welcome to our two baptismal candidates who have been baptized, Ella and Blake. One more round of applause for those two people. It is one of my favorite things to do baptisms in the church, and uh, it is just a joy to have you all with us for those baptisms. Um, also want to mention, if you are new with us this morning, a uh, well, special welcome to you as well. We ask that you please sign our guest book in the back. Uh, a few things that I want to call your attention to here this morning. One is uh, we have a parish directory. I think I mentioned this last week, but we need to update our privacy settings in, those parish, in that parish directory. And on June 18th through July 9th, those are four Sundays, our wonderful communications director, Britt, will be in the parish hall for you to swing by to take a look at the parish directory and to make sure that your information is correct in there and that it's okay to share it with the rest of the parish uh, community. So we need your permission to do that. So make sure you stop by the parish hall during coffee hour starting on June 18th to see Britt to update your privacy settings for that. It is Memorial Day uh, on Monday. Our office will be closed. Um, and then we want to also call your attention to uh, June 18th, which is going to be the first Sunday we switch to the 9 o'clock service. Don't come at 10. We'll be over with church by then. We'll say a special prayer for you. But 9 o'clock on June 18th, we'll switch to our 1 9 a.m. service. Vacation Bible School will be coming up in July, July 10th through the 14th. And then, last but not least, uh, it is with, uh, uh, again, a, a, a glad heart that we have the date set, but with a heavy heart, we do have some funerals coming up for some beloved members of our community. Uh, Dave Dawson's funeral will be on June 10th at 11 a.m. at St. Peter's Church in San Pedro. Uh, Kathy McKee, her service will be on June 23rd here at St. Cross, correct? Yes. And then also Al Robson. His service will be on July 29th, um, uh, which is a Saturday. Do we have a date for Betty Ferran's funeral yet? The 16th, the 16th of this month, so of June. Betty Ferran, beloved, uh, beloved member of this community, uh, June 16th here at St. Cross. So we hope you're able to join us for those. Uh, and again, uh, we ask that uh, you keep the staff uh, here at St. Cross in your prayers and all of you, each other, in your prayers as well. The most important thing we can do as a gathered community is to pray for one another. So please do keep uh, you all and us in your prayers. Thanks again for being with us this morning. And now what I'd like to do, sorry, is invite those who've had a birthday or anniversary from this past month to come on forward for a special birthday anniversary blessing. Come on forward. I'll meet you right at the steps. Right. All right. Please join us as we sing the anniversary and birthday prayer and, well, and, and, and celebrate with all these fine people as they celebrate these milestones.
you can take a seat now. Go ahead. Let us give thanks by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for indeed our God is a consuming fire.
be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All thanks and prayers are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of Blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we sing for joy. creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You called the people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign, and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends and said, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so, remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed, and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May the spirit of truth lead you into all truth, giving you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to proclaim the wonderful works of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. 